On today's show, we talk about a new book featuring video game characters, the galaxy goes to Red Alert in Star Trek Online, and the developers of the Prodigy video game talk about their process. Computer, begin program. Welcome to Com Relay 47, your weekly transmission of all the latest Star Trek gaming news. I'm Tony, and with me today to briefly discuss these new developments in the world of Star Trek gaming is James. Thank you, Tony. In Star Trek Online news, the galaxy is going to red alert for two whole weeks. Starting on the 3rd of November, captains on PC can engage the Borg, the Alachi, the Tholians, the Zenkethi, and the Nakul to earn XP, marks, dilithium, and daily event progress. After gaining 10 daily progress, players will be rewarded with an ultimate tech upgrade, a specialization point, an experimental ship upgrade token. The event lasts until Thursday, November 17th. Tony, will you be participating in this event? Absolutely. Uh, the, the Red Alerts uh, events, I find, are the best way to level up uh, ship masteries. Because you get a ton of XP, and the Borg ones are so quick to do, and they take away the cooldown. And you can literally run, you can have a ship with zero mastery XP, run five or six red alerts, Borg red alerts, and you've leveled it up fully. It's, it's, it's amazing. I, that's my favorite thing to do when these red alert events come out. Excellent. I'm, I'm definitely going to be running it myself. Uh, I'm probably going to try and get all the Endeavors uh, of all the cucumber ships on uh, yet another character uh, on Accolade Hunter probably next Monday. So that's going to be that's gonna be a fun stream. Along with the recent content update for console captains comes the new fleet rewards and updates. This includes a trance warp to Bajor that actually works, a Klingon fleet starbase with a reachable transporter officer menu, new duty officers, and Admiralty ship rewards. Be sure to visit your local fleet holding for more details. Yeah, so this is pretty great for the console captains to get this. Um, you play on Xbox, right? I do play a little bit on Xbox. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be really great because obviously not having the beige or trans orb is just kind of irritating. But at least finally got the beige or uh, there. And obviously having all the fleets fixed as well. It's going to be really, really helpful for all us Xbox players. Uh, do you play any, uh, any on Xbox at all, Tony? Uh, I don't. I do have an account on PlayStation. And um, in fact, it's funny. This reminded me that I did not go to the fleet holdings on PC when this stuff was released and 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 get some of the stuff I, sh I should probably get. So this is a great reminder for me to go do that. Coming soon from Star Trek Explorer magazine is a collection of short stories featuring the characters from Star Trek Online, including Captain Valkel Sean and the crew of the USS Enterprise F. Senior Star Trek Online game designer Jesse Heinig is one of the authors contributing to these short stories. This hardcover book will be released on the 8th of November and is available for pre-order on various websites and bookstores. Will you be purchasing this book, Mr. Tony? Absolutely. I saw this story and I'm really excited about this. I think we're going to get some, some backstory and some insight into the crew of the Enterprise F. I think it's amazing that there that there's an official publication coming out with the crew from Star Trek Online that's in the Enterprise F. And I think this is a good indication that if we see any of the crew members in Star Trek Picard from the Enterprise F, because we saw the ship in the trailer, I think we may actually get to see some of them in live action. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if we see Captain Sean in live action in Star Trek Picard. And I think, um, you know, because there was, there was a Star Trek actor or writer that recently talked about how Star Trek is really trying to be a little bit more like Star Wars in the terms of sort of canifying all of the... Canifying? Is that a word? We're going to go with it canifying all of the different releases and materials uh, a little bit more officially. So comic books, 
uh, you know, print material like this, the live action shows, the animated shows, um, the video game. I, I think they're really trying to be a little bit more cohesive with the canon. And I think that this in itself is a good indication that we may, in fact, see live action versions of these characters. That would be absolutely insane. And I'd love to see uh, Sean make an appearance in live action. He is a fantastic character. So I'm all up for this. And I'd love to see him. And uh, I mean, they, they made the uh, prelude to the 2009 uh book which was quite cool and then we saw some of his characters return so yeah i'd love to see that happen with right here with star trek online starting this thursday november 3rd star trek timelines will be featuring reward characters ixtana rax Crodin and Commander T'Pol in this week's skirmish event. Also be advised that due to the United States setting their clocks back for daylight savings time, this event will be one hour shorter than usual. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, what do you think of these? Uh, do you play Do you play Star Trek timelines? I, I have been starting to actually, since we've been doing this, to play a little bit of Star Trek timelines, which has been pretty fun. Uh, so to get ex extra characters is pretty pretty cool, and to get to Paul, I mean, I I, I don't have her yet. If I'm gonna be honest, so uh, I'm definitely gonna try and nab her for this event. Yeah, that's awesome. I, the um, uh, Ixtana Rax, I think, is from the episode where the uh, Gem Hadar take over the Defiant. Um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, somebody can correct me in the comments. Uh, and Crodin is the um, sort of refugee con guy who ends up on Deep Space Nine and uh, and and convinces Odo to take him to this asteroid where he rescues his daughter and then he gives him the key that has like the it's like a shapeshifter key. So I think it's pretty cool that those characters are are coming. They they always seem to find some of the some of the craziest, most obscure characters uh, and add to the game. But I mean, that's it's a collection game. So and Commander T'Pol is um, is one of my favorite versions of her. The only other version I like more is when she's in the actual Starfleet uniform in in alternate future when she's the captain. And um, and I, I don't know what it is, but I love when those characters like like Kira and T'Pol end up in the actual Starfleet uniforms in, in certain episodes. Those are, it's just my favorite when they're, when they're actually in there like that. In an interview with comicbook.com, several designers of the Star Trek Prodigy game, Supernova, spoke about getting involved with the project, developing the game whilst the show was being also developed, and writing a story that was very Trek, but also very Prodigy all at the same time. You can track out this article by clicking the link in the description below. So Tony, uh, have you read this article yet? Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was pretty cool. The developers were talking about how um, they, you know, they were approached. Uh, they approached. Um, yeah, the developers were talking about how um, they approached the writer of the game with this idea, and the writer actually wasn't familiar with Prodigy at all because the show hadn't come out yet when they started. And so it was interesting to be developing the game while the show was still being produced before it was even released. And I think that's really fascinating because they got an insight into the show before it actually came out. And they somehow were able to write such a great story that was very Trek and very Prodigy at the same time and felt like it it, it belonged in, in, in both those worlds. And Prodigy just does a wonderful job in general of sort of walking this line between being this very new and different thing from what we've seen in Star Trek before to feeling very Trek-like. And, and I think that goes to the way the characters are d developed uh, on the show and then how that translates to the game and sort of the objectives you have in the game and the storyline of the game. And, um, and I thought it was really cool uh, to hear them talk about that process and sort of the behind-the-scenes look and, and how many different writers were involved and how many different people were involved in different aspects of the game. I mean, it's really interesting uh, that they said that in the article because I remember when I first started the nine-hour playthrough that we did where we did the whole whole game in one lot. And loads of people at the beginning of the game said it felt like that the, the, the development of the characters had actually gone back a little bit. But by the end of the game, they felt like they were the characters at the end of, of the first part of the season. So it's interesting to learn, actually, that this game was developed at the same time. So that, 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 that's really, really cool. And it was actually really interesting at the end of the stream getting the developers in, you know, you know, they, they said, like, thank you, thank you for playing the game and stuff like that. 
but it was it was just that, that's that's really interesting to hear. Well, that's it for this week's Com Relay 47. Don't forget to like the video and comment below with your thoughts. Follow us on Twitter at P1 Armada. That's P, the number one, Armada on Twitter. Check out our website, www.priorityonearmada.com, for more information on our Star Trek online in-game fleets. And join us every Saturday for the Priority One Armada live stream, where we go more in-depth on this week's Star Trek Online news and take you, the viewers, on an away mission to earn in-game loot. Viewers can also win loot by entering our giveaways during each live stream. That's every Saturday night at 9 p.m. Eastern on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Every Thursday, we live stream TFO Thursday with the Priority One Armada. Armada members can team up with each other to earn marks, XP, and Dilithium. Check out the in-game fleet tab for details and starting times. You can also join myself every Monday for Accolade Hunter, where we hunt down those pesky hard find accolades in Star Trek Online, work on a viewer chosen gear build, or talk about all things Trek with surprise guests. Stream times may vary, so make sure you're subscribed, following, and keep an eye on our social media for show times. If that's not enough Star Trek gaming entertainment, join us every Friday night at 7 p.m. Eastern for our newest show, Star Trek Adventures Sovereign. Trek along with the crew of the USS Sovereign in a Star Trek Adventures RPG live play. Your favorite Priority One Armada hosts role play as their own character creations, exploring strange new worlds, seeking out new life and new civilizations, and boldly going wherever the dice rolls take them. Streaming live every Friday night starting at 7 p.m. Eastern on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Big thank you to our Patreon supporters for helping make all these Priority One Armada shows and streams possible. Big thanks to Wiley Coyote, Prince1983, Teacher Guy, Amagen, Tizan, Azar, Four, Seal, Karabak, B Film Van, Ross Lemon, Gojinx, Darfriz, Miller, Juro, Eric Orlin, Cat, Victor Vore, Astro, Gojira, Quicksilver, and Mufasa. If you want to, subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on all the latest Star Trek gaming news. That's it for James and me. Com Relay 47 out.